what we're watching here, this is Flashpoint. This is on the Victory Network. It's owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland. It has a host named Gene Bailey. This is Gene Bailey right here on screen. They're going to have Jesse Duplantis on as a guest. Now, before we actually watch the Flashpoint episode, let me introduce you to Jesse Duplantis. It's this guy right here. I've been talking about him for a while, a long while. Let me show you a couple clips I've got on this guy. There's one that I'm sure you will recognize right off the bat. This is probably the most famous clip that I have of Jesse Duplantis. It's Duplantis talking with Kenneth Copeland, right? Copeland had just purchased a gigantic $45 million private jet and was getting criticized for that pretty hard and complaining about it. Felt like it was unfair criticism. So listen to the conversation Jesse Duplantis and Kenneth Copeland have with each other. And then we're going to watch this Flashpoint episode with Jesse Duplantis on it. Uh, by the by, this happened in 2015, I believe, this conversation. The Flashpoint episode happened August 2nd, 2022. Also, if you haven't seen the previous parts to this, don't sweat it. You don't have to see parts 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 to understand the context. I'll provide it as we go along if it's required. Brother Copeland, I was flying home from a meeting, and I had come out of a glorious meeting. I had just finished me and Creflo Dollar were preaching. Had a gl God, Creflo Dollar is famously a scam artist, famously a scam evangelist, if you will, a televangelist who does nothing more than take advantage of his audience, plain and simple. Glorious meeting. So I was, for lack of a better way to say it, I was spiritually high. I said, people yeah. were saved, yeah. touched, and blessed. Got in the plane that God so graciously gave us, and we're flying home. As I was going home, the Lord, real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly, Lord. He said, do you really like it? And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle it for me. I went, what? He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate? Now, when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane, I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. And, they just, <laughs> and he went back to flying. I said, Lord, I don't think I was letting my faith stagnate. He said, so this is all I could ever do. I said, you want, you, you're you trying to tell me something. You couldn't have done that on an airliner. No, sir, no way. Stand up and say, what'd you say, Lord? No. Okay, no, yeah. And the guy sitting over there saying, what the hell does he think he's doing? <laughs> you can't do you that. You can't do that. No. Yeah, so what they're saying is you would look like a fool to the outside world if if you did the things that you do on a daily basis. You know, I'm actually going to side with the right-wingers here, I think, for the moment. And I'm going to say shame is a powerful tool. Shame is a necessary part of human nature and interaction. If you do something fucking weird... Shame is nature's way of telling you not to do that thing anymore. So I would say Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis have, ha have found a, a nice little sidestep around shame by isolating themselves from the rest of society so that they can do all that weird shit that they want to do without fear of being shamed for it. No, that, this, this is so important. And those of you that are, that are just now coming into these things, um, in, in the first place, Jesse and, 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 and I and, and others, Keith Moore and Creflo and all of us, they, the world is in such a shape. We can't get there without this. That's right. We've got to have this. We would have the mess that the airlines are in today. I would have to stop. I'm being very conservative at least 75 to 80, more like 90% of what we're doing because you can't get there and from here. It's impossible. So, so this is him justifying owning a private jet that's worth $45 million. Look, I get it. You know, you, you want to buy a private plane because you feel like you need to use it to get around easier or whatever else. Fine, fine. I feel like that's stupid and... You could spend that money on a normal plane ticket rather than a private jet, but okay. But a $45 million jet? You gotta be kidding me. $45 million jet. You know how many years 
it would take to spend the same amount of money that he spent on first class tickets if he just flew commercial first class for something like 120 something years every single day 365 days a year for 120 something years he wouldn't spend 45 million dollars on first class tickets $45 million jet is absurdly expensive. That's the kind of money that the vast majority of people in the world will never see in their lifetimes. And he just lit it on fire so that he could have a nice, private, cushy jet. And now he's sitting here justifying it to his audience. Oh, we, we ha and, and this was such a good illustration. I just, mm -hmm. the, the Lord impressed me. That's why we're on that airplane. We can talk to oh, God. Glory we to can, God. We, it's true. We, it, it's, when I was flying for Oral Roberts, the uh, brother Deweese, my, my mm -hmm. boss on the airplane, he said, now, Kenneth, this is sanctuary. It protects the anointing on, on uh, uh, brother, brother Roberts. Roberts. And he said, you keep your mouth shut. Don't talk to him unless he talks. Because when he's on a meeting, he doesn't talk to anybody but God. Now, Oral used to fly airlines. Right. But it, even back mm -hmm. there then, man, mm -hmm. it, it got to the place where it was agitating his spirit. Sure. People come oh, he didn't like to be around normal people. Is that what it was? I'm so sorry for Oral Roberts, multimillionaire. I get it, you know. Don't want to be around normal. Uh, what's the word? Not plebs, not normies, but uh, peasants. Yeah, didn't want to be around peasants. Totally, yeah. Poor guy. He had to deal with that, right? Been up to him. He right. had become famous, and they want him to pray for him and right. all that. You, you can't, you, you can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope-filled world. Right. And get in an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right. Interesting. Sounds to me like he's calling normal peasants demons right is it just me am i misinterpreting so anyway yeah that was kenneth copeland and jesse duplantis justifying their 45 million dollar expenditure on a private jet they don't want to be in a long tube full of demons with that context in mind let's listen to what jesse duplantis has to say you know what you know what? Let's let's go all the way. There's one more clip I want to show you about Duplantis here. Let's watch this one. This will give you a nice, clear idea of exactly who Duplantis is. I honestly believe this. Oh, sorry. This one came out sep mid September 2021, and he was at a. You know what? This is a yeah. This is a victoryathon. I think this was on Flashpoint. This is on the exact same show we're watching right now. Mid-September 2021. Listen to this. I honestly believe this, that the reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, when you understand, it, you can speed up the time. I was on television. He said, I heard you was a millionaire. I said, that's not right. That's not true. He said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. Multi. Now, add that to it, you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, he couldn't handle that. He liked to have had a fit. And I said, you mess with me, I'll buy this station and I'll fire you. Isn't there something in the Bible that speci specifically condemns being prideful, being puffed up with pride? This seems like the clearest example of being puffed up with pride that I've seen since Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh, he didn't like that, then. Did he? Uh, you know, that was a little fleshy, but it felt good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Just... Why are people laughing at this? This is not something that, you know, you should expect to hear a pastor saying, right? I did, you know what I'm not saying? It wrong. So, Let alone a televangelist. I realize that I will not move people emotionally yeah. to give. Right, no. I'm going to have people move according to the Word of God. What is God saying to you? And I really believe this. If people would call this number <clears throat> and put this victory all over the world on every available voice, mm -hmm. every available outlet, mm -hmm. God, the father, he would say, Jesus, go get him. Yeah. Because you see, he. Wa wow. So if you donate money to me, Jesus will come back. Donate every penny you've got and Jesus will come. He to see us as much as we want to see him. You see what I'm saying? And so what has hindered all these things is, right. uh, uh, is because people are not doing in the financial realm, because we're living in an economic world, 
what God's called them to do. You know, he's called us to do that. So I don't have a problem with giving. I don't have a problem with receiving. It, it doesn't make any difference. I bet. Yeah, it doesn't have a problem with receiving. Totally. That checks out. Because I just made up my mind. I want Jesus to come. Now, uh, they said, do you own a jet? Yes. You can have it the day after the rapture. It's yours. Because <laughs> Jesse, Jesse uh, is going to heaven. I, I'm you know, honestly, I wouldn't be so sure about that if I were Jesse Duplantis. I feel like he's a little more confident that he's going to heaven than I would be if I were in his situation, honestly. But, you know, I, I guess his spiritual, what do you call it? Like his, I guess his soul's status is his business, not mine. So, okay. That's Jesse Duplantis. Just wanted to give you a little introduction before we watch this Flashpoint episode with him on it. So let's give it a watch, see what he has to say for himself. And we're back for the second half of Flashpoint. Just got a few minutes left. All right, would you please welcome Jesse Duplantis uh, in here. All right, he's got to go speak here in just a few minutes, so I want to get right to you, Jesse. You want to defend yourself there? <laughs> what Hank says? Yeah. I don't believe anything Hank Kuhneman says. <laughs> You and me both. No, wait a minute. Don't you going to write about that. Yeah. Let me just say this. God created man. And he went, I can do better. Yeah. And he created woman, and we've been, un we, we, we've been lost since. Man. <laughs> That's true. Women are controlling the world, yeah. Gene. That's right. I don't care what anybody says. They're controlling the world. You go to a store today. You walk in it. You go walk in the women's perfume. You know, I feel like he's trying to do a stand-up bit right now, and it's just not funny at all. Controlling the world. Yeah. Let's do, let me step back. We, we, we've been lost since. But... <laughs> All right, let's see what kind of jokes Duplantis wrote for his Flashpoint appearance. See if he's any good. Created man. <laughs> and he went, I can do better. Yeah. <laughs> and he created woman, and we've been, un we, we, we've been lost since. But... <laughs> That's true. Women are control <laughs> They're laughing, but like nobody else is. Look at these smiles on their faces. This is deeply, deeply cringy. In the world, yeah. Gene. That's right. I don't care what anybody says. They're controlling the world. You go to a store today. You walk in it. You can walk in the women's perfume, women's shoes, women's clothes. Where's the men's section? It's back on the left-hand side of the bathrooms. Corner. That's right. Not always. I mean, there are men's section and women's sections in all kinds of stores. What is he talking about? <laughs> they know we ain't got no money. And yeah. We got the money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right, so, uh, Brother DePlantis, you've been here you listening. That was just an absolutely terrible joke, honestly. That was not a funny joke at all. Was that his best material? You usually lead with your best material, right? This is his first statement on the show. So I'm assuming it was the best material he had. I hope it gets better from here, man. The Plantis, you've been here you listening. Call me Jesse. Forgot you've been <laughs> listening to everything for the last few minutes. Uh -huh. Where do you think this nation's at heading into the midterms? Well, I'm gonna deal with that on the night that I preach, uh, uh, Wednesday night when I when I when I'm the night speaker. It's the frustration of end times. Yeah. And I'm gonna deal with that. See, it's it's righteous and unrighteous and rubbing against each other, which is friction. But you got to understand something. We, I read the end of the book. I win. Yeah. I, 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 Gene, I don't really care what they say because right. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. Amen. And I create my world. My, my daughter, Jody, she said, Dad, everything you touch prospers. You know why? I create my world and then I walk in it. Yeah. I've had many opportunities to fail. I just don't take any. Yeah. Now, Dude, I am not understanding a fucking word this guy is saying. Not one. I don't mean that to be prideful or arrogant, but I determine what's going to happen, not them. Right. They told me not to be prideful or arrogant, but I determine what's going to happen, not them. I'm, I'm not understanding. I feel like in the very beginning of this episode, we firmly established that this dude is the definition of prideful and arrogant, right? I mean, what he said about buying a news station just to fire a single low-level employee for criticizing him for being a multimillionaire like that it doesn't get more prideful than that the bible specifically condemns that type of behavior specifically see i am the government one time the irs came at me and i said excuse me you work for the government i am the government yeah <laughs> what they went, oh, you. now you want to dance with me? Let's yeah. dance. Yeah. 
You see what I'm saying? I don't mean that in, in an arrogant way. It's just that I'm not really concerned about all this because I knew this is Matthew 24 coming to pass. Yeah, amen. You know, and, uh, you know, when the, the gospel is preached to the world, the end shall come. So we're seeing all these kind of stuff. We say, but yeah, but what about all the laws? What about them? It doesn't make any difference. See, they'll get to a point, and you listen to me. If they push too much, and I don't mean this to sound that, that, that I'm, I'm a, a revolution will take place. Right. I'm just, we, we, Americans are revolutionary. When we've had enough, we've had enough. Republican, Democrat, liberal, independent, whatever. We'll get to a point when people will say, like they're saying, we're going to seize your bank account. <laughs> Not mine. You better have something in your hand if you try. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mean that arrogantly, see. Sure. You'll get to a point where people will stand up sure. and say, enough is enough. Amen. And it's getting close. Amen. It really is. I believe you're right. And, and you better have something in your hand if you try. Did you catch that? Basically, he's saying you better be holding a gun if you're going to take my bank account because I'm going to come at you. I mean, this is his... I, it sounds like a physical threat, right, is what he's saying. If you seize my bank account, I will physically attack you or I, I will weaponize my audience to do so for me. A am I reading this correctly? This is deeply disturbing stuff. Is, I believe you're right. And, and Jesus is coming, and we thank God for that. Yeah. All right. So, but Jesse, how do you, how do we as Christians, uh, and and not just conservative, but Christians out there, how do we stand strong, but stay lined up in the Word and not get off into arrogance or get off into right. error? Well, first thing first. Yeah. Got to tell you, I don't think Jesse Duplantis is the guy to give you advice on avoiding arrogance. Bob says, occupy till I come. So I'm not really focused on what they're doing. Right. If you focus on your priorities, you eliminate all your confusion. Mm -hmm. See, that's why they put them blinkers on them horses when they're running. Right. And they don't want that horse looking at the next horse next to them. They want them looking at that goal line. Actually, they do that because horses have their eyes on the side and they see everything around them and they get spooked really easily so they put blinders not blinkers they're called blinders on the sides of their face so that they're only looking forward and they're not freaked out by what's happening next to them if you make a you know a, a big jump or move near a horse it will kick you straight in the head you do not want that they're very easily startled because they were prey animals originally it's really easy to startle a horse. But okay, I guess I'll go with Jesse's explanation instead because they want the horse staring forward, all right? So me, I'm a goal person. Right. I focus on that and Mr. Biden can do what he wants and I'm not really worried about it because he ain't gonna remember what he did anyway, so it doesn't make <laughs> me do See, this is just more propaganda about Biden having dementia. Biden does not have dementia. He doesn't even have early signs of dementia. There is no indication whatsoever that Biden has cognitive issues beyond what any 78 or 79 year old person would have. Biden is perfectly fine. Now, he has lost a little bit of his flair. Back in 2012, I think, he debated Paul Ryan and he was slinging it in that debate, dude. He was absolutely killing it with Paul Ryan. He was really, really good in that debate. Now, he's lost a little bit of his luster, a little bit. But he still comes out here and does debates. Dude debated Donald Trump. He still goes out there and holds pe press conferences, takes questions, makes comments, the whole nine yards. A lot of the Biden has dementia stuff comes from edited clips trying to show that Biden has cognitive decline. Like there's a clip of Biden out there meeting the Pope. You know, let me show it. I showed it in the last one, but I'm going to do it again. Let me just show you the clip so you have the the right wing version of the events, and then I'll explain what happened. Thank you, very much. Thank you for that. It was a famous African American baseball player in America. Okay, so that was it. It looked like Biden walked up to the Pope and said, "You're a famous." African American African American baseball player in America, right? That's what it seemed like what was happening. That's not actually what happened. They cut it off right there. Did you notice the jump cut? There was a pause there which made it easy to clip. Biden said that phrase and then stopped talking, and it made it easy for people to assume that Biden called the Pope 
a famous African-American baseball player. Actually, what happened was Biden was about to tell the Pope a story about a famous African-American baseball player who was segregated from the rest of his team and broke through barriers and all this other stuff. The pause that Biden took right in the middle of the sentence there was to wait for the Pope's translator to come up because the guy doesn't speak English very well. And the translator did come up from behind. I'm not sure if you can see it in this one or not, but no. Yeah, there, right there on the left side. That is the Pope's translator. And and when Biden paused and looked behind him, she walked up to translate the story. It's actually a long story that he told the Pope at this event. So anyway, the point is that is the kind of thing that these people do. It is all about propaganda and misleading people. It's all about clipping things out and making it look like Biden has dementia. He doesn't. He doesn't even have early signs of it. But that's what they do. And then Jesse Duplantis, these people's pastor, comes out, continues to double down on the claims about Biden having dementia and all that stuff. Just propaganda, plain and simple. I don't mean that to be, I don't mean that to be, actually, I'm trying to give you help. This man needs some help. And I'm surprised that the family don't help this man. I mean, you you understand? Sure, absolutely. This man needs some help. Biden is perfectly capable. He's fine. He doesn't have any signs of cognitive decline. Trump has actual early signs of Alzheimer's. Like, really. He really, really does. But they don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about Biden having some fake perception of dementia produced by right-wing media, by QAnon members, through faking clips. So, and, and someone asked me this coming over today. What about this China thing? Let me tell you what you do with bullies. You slap them. Yep. <laughs> what? What? Let me tell you what you do with bullets. You slop them. Is that what he said? Absolutely. I need some help. So, and, and someone asked me this coming over today. What about this China thing? Let me tell you what you do with bullies. You slap them. Yep. <laughs> That's right. I was raised on the streets of New Orleans with the La Costa Nostra, of the mafia. See. Now, 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 I'm not in the mafia. People think I am, but I'm not. And, and, uh, but what I'm saying is, you, you want to fight? So if Miss Pelosi wants to go over there, you put a jet in front of her, a jet behind her, and two on the side of it, and say, you want to walk? Yeah. They're going to back off. O- okay, I'm not sure what he's talking about. You slop them or whatever, but based on what he's saying here, I think what he's talking about is Nancy Pelosi just went over to do like a an East Asia tour where she was meeting with East Asian countries and do you know giving talks and just kind of working with allies and stuff whatever and there was talk that she may be going to Taiwan now China doesn't like Taiwan very much China believes that Taiwan is part of China still uh, incorrectly but the US views Taiwan correctly as its own independent country it's kind of like Ukraine and Russia in many ways, you know, Russia wanted Ukraine to be part of them again. So they just invade with tanks and go completely nuts, disturbing stuff. So China starts lining these tanks up along the border. Of course, you know, there's an ocean between Taiwan and China. That's neither here nor there. They start lining tanks up as an intimidation tactic to send a message. And they said if Pelosi visits Taiwan, there will be dire consequences. I think they said something like that. It was really, really strong language that they used. Serious stuff. So what did Pelosi do? She went. She went to Taiwan. She did it. Which is, decisions like that are exactly why I'm glad I'm not the president. I don't have to make decisions like this. I'm just like a neutral bystander. I don't know what the right decision would be. It's a small ask, right? Don't go to Taiwan. Not a big deal. Just don't do it and you won't you'll avoid this international incident and possible war. But will you? Because every demand that we cede to China, they start making stronger and stronger demands, knowing that we will like bend to their will. So if we bend to China's will now, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, basically. And that's why this decision is very, very complicated. Taiwan is its own independent country and deserves to exist on its own independent of China. 
if that's how I feel about it. But it's really a tough situation that they're in right now, in my opinion. So anyway, like I said, Pelosi did end up going to Taiwan and China started launching missiles as a sign of power or whatever you want to call it. So it, things are getting a little dicey at the moment with Taiwan. I hope things go okay for Taiwan. I'm kind of concerned for them. But anyway, I'm assuming that's what Jesse Duplantis is talking about here. Kind of a weird thing to bring up in this, but okay, let's keep listening. Thing is, you, you want to fight? So if Miss Pelosi wants to go over there, you put a jet in front of her, a jet behind her, and two on the side of it, and say, you want to walk? Yeah. They're going to back off. I think he's right here, actually. I think he may be right. China famously makes a lot of threats without ever carrying through. But, you know, calling their bluff and all that, it's, it's ugly. I'm just glad that I'm not the guy that has to make decisions like this, to be perfectly honest with you. Because, you see, when they lose, when they lose the people, that's going to remember them. That's true. You see what I'm saying? Very good. Now, you got to look. That's why Jesus, Jesus looked the devil in the eye and just spit, buddy. Yeah. And that's why he won in those temptations, you see. What? Jesus looked a guy in the eye and then just spit? The only instance I remember of Jesus spitting in someone's eyes is when he was trying to heal their blindness, right? What is he talking about right now? Is he, he's saying it as though Jesus was mad at somebody, so he spit at them. Uh, um, okay. He made up his mind. So I see it happening, but I'm really not that concerned because we know in whom we have believed and we're persuaded. That he's able to keep what we commit to him. What have I committed to him? My future. Right. I don't deal with my past because the past never sees the future. So it sounds like Jesse is saying he doesn't worry that China is going to attack the U.S. or whatever because he believes in God and he doesn't think that God would allow that to happen. This is concerning. This is a concerning mindset for somebody that has so much power to have. Seriously. Deeply disturbing stuff. I deal with the present and the future. So now I want things, I wanted to go back to where America was when I was raised up. Yeah. I never thought in my entire life, Gene, that people wouldn't know what sex they are. I know. Yeah. Everybody knows what sex they are. That's never been a question in anybody's head. We're talking gender, the psychological, uh, cultural, and sociological, societal level manifestation of the, their personal identity. What's bizarre to me is that these people claim to be in favor of freedom and are out here screaming about how people shouldn't be free to do what they want. Blows my mind, man. Well, let me give you a word. Look down. Right. <laughs> no one has a problem with this. Seriously, this is a manufactured outrage that they're doing right now. Just look down. Yeah, but I don't feel it. It don't make no difference what you feel like. You are what you are. You see what I'm saying? Right. And I don't mean that to sound crazy, but it is that you are what you are. Yeah. So I made up my mind, and I see the scripture. I have the helmet of salvation on, not the cap. Right. So my head's right. covered. Right. What does that mean? I have the helmet of salvation on, not the cap of salvation? What? Shield of faith, you know, breastplate of righteousness, loins girded by the truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, Satan don't know who I am. He thinks I'm God. Uh, Till you take the hat off. Right. Don't take the hat off. You see what Amen. I'm saying? No, I don't. What is he talking about? And when you do that in the midst of all these things, you know, and, and, and I'm not really against the, the left or the because they need Jesus. Right. Absolutely. Not, not too many people pray for him. We pray yeah. for him to, you know, lose and everything else like that. But I'm just saying, if we can get people to change, if we can change their hearts, we'll change America. We'll change it. And not just simply the truth. Right. Simply the truth. Jesse Duplantis, everybody. <laughs> okay, I feel like I, I could only make sense of like half of what he said. It was all nonsense. And he kind of came in with a comedy routine that was like piss poor. The comedy routine didn't make any sense, and it wasn't funny at all. What a weird appearance he made. Oh, and then he threatens the government if they try to take his bank account because he's not paying taxes, then they better come with a gun. That was even weirder, right? All right. So much is happening around here. I just want to show you a quick recap of what happened at Flashpoint Live. Please do. Sunday night. Watch. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've seen this one on this sh on Telltale Unfiltered or on Twitch. So <laughs> this will probably be like new material. Us wide forward, are you ready? The movement that is taking on America is not only pushing back on the insanity of the left, but it's turning around and putting the fear of God into the lazy establishment right. Well, I just love all these men of God and what they're standing for. It is no longer Republicans against Democrats. It's Christians against evil. Oh, that's right. They had Dog the Bounty Hunter. We should probably watch that one, too, eventually. That could be super interesting, right? Dog the Bounty Hunter's appearance. I've seen clips from it, and it got a little nutty, to say the least. What's amazing is the spirit is rising in this nation, and it's because of you. We're taking America back. I just love coming. I love hearing all these speakers, and it really gives me a new... Look at this. Look at this flag they've got here. It's the American flag mixed with like the star of david the jewish symbol interesting right they do claim to be pro-israel but that's not because they like jewish people or they believe in the jewish religion or any of that it's because they need israel to exist as a country before armageddon can come and once armageddon comes you better believe that the Jewish people will be destroyed in their mind. It is not because they have any level of respect for the Jewish people. They do not at all. And if you wonder if that's the case or not, just go look at what old Doug Mastriano, governor candidate for Pennsylvania, had to say about Jewish people. They're not a part of the movement. They're not allowed to come to his events and cover him like Ben Shapiro isn't allowed to come there and cover his events or any of that stuff because he's Jewish. They don't like Jewish people. They like Israel existing right now because it's a prerequisite to Armageddon coming. It really gives me a new ignited purpose, I feel like, yes. in life. And you can feel the spirit touch me like every time I'm here and I totally... That's what she said. New way, so I just love it. I'm here to let every race baiting Democrat, liberal, demonic Democrat that America is a Jesus loving country. The message that I think we need to bring forward right now as Christians and as conservatives and patriots is look, you could do whatever you want to me, but our children are off limits. You see, this new movement that you are all part of, it's saying to the leaders of our society, that we are willing to use our power to protect those that cannot protect themselves. There's something happening among our young people. And the thing that the left has counted on is keeping the blinders on our children. But now there's something that has shifted and they are literally going to form the most shocking army that America has ever seen. Yeah, uh, I've heard that guy, that specific guy we were just listening to, I've heard him say something similar before. Mario Murillo is his name. Anyway, he's said similar things before. Doesn't surprise me to hear it, but you hear that bit he said about an army? He means that literally. He means a literal army. He is not being hyperbolic. He's not using it in a figurative way. It's about actually forming an army that's going to be used to rise up against the U.S. government. Seriously, I'm not, I'm not joking. Ever seen. Flashpoint represents action. We are to be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And they're leading that effort. We have got to get stronger and go, you know what? Say what you want. You're not changing the way I believe because I believe that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. And this is an American nation founded on Judeo Christian principles. And that's who we are. And you can't change that. Okay, the U.S. was not founded on Christian values by any stretch of the imagination, first of all. Second, I don't want to change you. If you're a Christian, I'm totally cool with that. That is okay. We are A-OK. -okay. What I want is for you to stop trying to turn the country into a Christian nationalist hellscape. That would be fantastic. Thanks. So many great things happening in our government, but we're not done yet. We've got a lot of ground we have to make up. And one of those. So I guess that was like a flashback from the episode, the previous episode where they did one in Fort Worth, Texas or something. These are like live events that they're holding across the country right now. Usually it's a TV show. But anyway, yeah, 
that was just a highlight reel. Maybe we'll watch that one at some point in the near future. I try to switch it up. Go between like Greg Locke and Flashpoint and a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, this has been pretty entertaining lately, this Flashpoint stuff. A lot of ground we have to make up. And one of those stalwarts in the Senate, our friend Jason Raper from the great state of Arkansas. Thank you, sir. Ooh, Jason Raper. What a, what a name, right? This is... This guy was a curse. This guy was cursed with a bad name. It's just a terrible name. Anyway, American Atheist has actually been working on things like legal things related to this guy. Like this guy apparently was in a nutshell trying to prevent people from he was blocking people on Twitter and there were some legal briefs filed against him for that kind of thing, interestingly enough. I I think he lost his primary or lost his election or something like that so uh, many of the cases i believe were dropped because there's no you know like he's not a member of congress anymore anyways or, or soon won't be so why bother but yeah he's an absolutely terrible person in large part the people that he was blocking were atheists of course let's keep listening to this guy arkansas state legislature district 35 see what he has to say here Jason Raper from the great state of Arkansas. Thank you, sir. Great. Again, absolutely terrible name. Now, to see you. National Association of Christian Lawyers. Christian Lawmakers. Lawmakers. Yeah. Lawmakers. And I want to get into that, but I, you were heavily involved, and you know, you've been on Flashpoint a lot, and we did a lot with the, the heartbeat bill and everything that uh, with for the state of Arkansas, even yes. though I know you're the governor did his thing. <laughs> yeah, we're still worried about we're him still on worried. that. Yeah, but I want to let... The governor of Arkansas. I don't know what they're referring to here. I wish I had more context. Just kind of jump in there about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. That's right. So here, here's in the Christian conservative world, there's kind of two trains of thought. One is this is great. Abortion's over. We don't have to worry with it, which is not, not accurate. Over. That's right. And, and then the other is, so where do we, there's a lot of people on this. So what do we do? And so what I've said, and I need you to either confirm or correct me, is even though your state has a trigger law that went into effect that said that, that doesn't mean the battle's over in your state. So we have to keep pushing that if we don't stand up against abortion. So they're not happy with making it so that states can ruin people's lives on an individual basis. They want to make it a federal law that you're not allowed to get an abortion under any circumstances. That's the goal, seems to me, right? That's right. Uh, that could easily go the other direction. So I want to know from your perspective, what about the overturning of Roe v. Wade? What should we be looking for and where do we go from here? Well, there's so much to say on it, so I'll try to capsulize it. And I do thank you for your leadership and being a voice on this. Being salt and light is number one in this battle for the soul of the nation. And that's really what Flashpoint does every single day. Uh, a little nuance on this for you. On June the 24th, the National Association of Christian Lawmakers was meeting at the College of the Ozarks in Branson, Missouri. By the way, Billy Brim was our keynote speaker right. to end that meeting. The moment of the announcement, all of our pro-life advocates from around the country were in the room together. As you know, I passed the first heartbeat bill in the country right. in 2013. Senator Hughes in Texas passed the 14th and, of course, ended abortion virtually in Texas before Roe was overturned. We were all in the room with Alan Parker, who was the attorney that represented Norma McCorvey, who was the Roe of Jane Roe, Pe Janet Porter, the, the, the inspiration. We were all in the room together when that was announced. And so we had a celebration and I encourage Christians across the country, Flashpoint viewers, your Flashpoint army, to be excited and be grateful for this huge decision because it cut the knees out Amen. from under the false gun to abortion. But the big... Cut the knees out of what? Let me step back and hear that one more time. This huge decision because it cut the knees out Amen. from under the false gun to abortion. But the false god of abortion is that what he said it was really hard to tell the big lie that people are if they're not careful they'll think is that abortion is over it's not over 
it's put back to the position it was in 1973, which is that each state has the ability to either regulate or prohibit abortion. Wisconsin, for instance, you know, the governor up there, the Democrat, called a special session trying to get rid of a law that was on the books. Fortunately, the Senate and the House said, no, we're not going to do that. And so they have a, an abortion prohibition in Wisconsin. So the trigger laws, which I passed the trigger law in Arkansas in 19, so as soon as Roe was overturned, Arkansas banned all abortion except to save the life of a mother in a medical emergency. But here's where we stand today, as you said, really where we're at, the fight's not over, because what's happening is 60% of abortions in America, Gene, are through chemical abortions. I.e., you take medicine, and it's that simple. Now, I don't know if that statistic is correct. 60%? I'm not sure. I, I don't know about that. I think it's a little higher, actually, but I'm not sure. U486, and what happened is the Democrats opened the door at the FDA so that these can be mailed direct into homes across the country. That's true. So basically, if you're earlier than, I think, 10 weeks maybe, uh, give or take, you can take medicine, just take a pill that's prescribed to you or whatever, and the FDA made it so that anybody can get this pill mailed to them, basically. Fantastic protection, fantastic option for people who live in a dangerous state right now. But these people don't want to even have that as an option. These people want to make it nearly impossible for, or just flat out impossible for anybody to get an abortion. Absolutely disgusting that they are so opposed to health care like this. Right. Now there's a nuanced part of this that a lot, a lot of people's talking about yet, but they're about to be because we're talking about it inside the pro-life movement. And that is that previously all these abortions happened at the clinics, the fetal remains were taken care of like most biomedical waste. Oh no. <laughs> Is he about to talk about, like, is he about to tell us that, like, Democrats are, like, doing something really disturbing and weird and crazy or something like that? I may have to skip through this. We'll see. Well, what we're having happen now and is a real concern for environmental and water quality issues, right. those remains are being flushed into our water systems mm. in these major cities. Oh, this is ridiculous. This is, like... Yeah, okay, so people have periods. People have periods. What are they supposed to do about that? You're not supposed to flush the toilet? Like, what are you supposed to do? This is such a ridiculous framing. Like, I don't even know what to do with it. I guess people just aren't supposed to have periods. You, they should all get hysterectomies. They should all use a different toilet. They shouldn't even use a, a, a bathroom. They should all have, like, porta-potties that they use. 24-7. Anybody who has the, the potential to get pregnant should only ever use a porta potty just to be safe, right? C cities. It's a difficult conversation, but it is one we are pursuing. In fact, uh, this is so ridiculous. Seriously. How is he taking this line of argument? Isn't he a lawyer? He must know. This guy must know. He must know he's completely full of shit. Not only that, but the mifepristone and the two different drugs that are used in the process of RU486 are going into the water system. This is something that the average American doesn't really think about yet, but we're beginning to bring that voice. Because it's a completely ridiculous angle of attack that, sadly, a lot of gullible people will probably fall for. People who think about this for 15 seconds will realize that it's complete nonsense. And I will tell you, organizations that are out there that are really at the forefront, I just got asked to be a senior policy advisor for Students for Life. Gene, these are young college people. Know, right. They absolutely are the most zealous, most passionate, and they've been some of the most effective. They've become the second largest pro-life organization in the country. You know... Calling people zealous as a compliment is a new level of dystopian nightmare. It's like that one time Steven Anderson, leader of the NIFB, was asked if he's a religious zealot or a hate monger, and he proudly said religious zealot. Those were two options that you shouldn't want to choose, either of them. But he chose zealot. 
Have you always hated gay people? Is it something your father taught you or is it something that you came to on your own? No, I haven't always. You know, I grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until Again, you notice <laughs> this is another good example. This guy is asked, have you always hated gay people or is this something you came to later? Um, some people would protest against that framing. I do not hate gay people, even though they actively make gay people's lives more difficult. No, he, he embraces it. Yeah, you're right. I do hate gay people. And it's something I came to later. Like so nonchalant about it. I read the Bible cover to cover at age 17 that I discovered the truth of what the Bible really says because a lot of passages don't ever get preached from the pulpit because they're simply not popular. I have to be honest, when, when I heard your sermon, it sounded like the rantings of someone who was either a hate monger or a religious zealot. And I'm wondering, which are you? Well, I'm a religious zealot and you know, I love the Bible, I love God's word. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like people are using religious zealot as a compliment and it blows my mind. And they've only been around for a little over a decade, as I understand it. And so many of those, and so I will urge your people, who, whoever you are out there that's watching this program consistently, get engaged with your lawmakers. Get engaged with your elected officials because, Gene, they are right now, some of them are in special sessions, talking about what they do. What we need to do in America is in the states where we're banning abortion is to stop the chemical abortion process because that's a violation of law. And another thing is you saw Dick Sporting Goods. Yes. Bank of America. Tyson Chicken in Arkansas. Were oh, dude, I love Dick's Sporting Goods. I used, when I was a kid, I used to go over to Dick's and play with Dick's balls all the time. Big fan. Love Dick's. Want Dick. Sadly, there are no Dick's around me right now, but usually I love having Dick's around me 24-7. What can you do? I'm at saying we're going to pay for people to travel. Well, you know what, Gene? We have laws to stop human trafficking in our states. And I'm telling you, it's just as much an anathema to me that somebody would pay for somebody to go baby as it is for them to pay for them to travel for the purposes of sex. Yeah, I would say so. I totally agree, except that's not what an abortion is. Abortion is not, quote unquote, a baby completely propagandistic framing of an innocuous medical procedure. You're not a baby, quote unquote. These people will do absolutely anything to scare the shit out of their audience, even if it means making stuff up. The stranger and more outlandish, the better. Hitler's propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, called this the big lie. The more detailed, specific, and elaborate the lie is, the more likely people will be to believe it. That is exactly what I've come to expect from Republicans. In the next part, they interview Governor Kevin Stitt of Oklahoma, and he talks about how persecuted he is as a white Christian man. It gets absolutely wild. So stick around for part three.